Feet are often a neglected part of the body, hidden in our socks and shoes. We don't pay much attention to them until they start to cause trouble. Yet, the feet serve as a foundation that impacts the posture of the whole body and performs very important functions. During each step, they cushion the impact by partially absorbing the forces and evenly distributing the remaining to the rest of our musculoskeletal system. If the foot does not perform this function, other parts of the body, such as the knee, hip or lumbar spine, become overloaded. Through the muscles and skin on our feet, we perceive a lot of information about the terrain we are on. When we walk, the foot maps the terrain, and by adapting to it, we are stable. Last but not least, the feet are the main organ through which we sense thermal comfort. We can get cold through our feet, or conversely, by warming our feet, we can warm up our whole body. What do our feet consist of? Each foot is made of 26 bones that are connected by joints and ligaments. The muscles also have an important function and are found particularly in the sole of the foot and the instep. These muscles can be controlled the most through therapy and exercise so that they have the correct strength and length. The ligamentous system can also be partially steered. The ligament strength is largely shaped by genetics, but it can be bolstered through the right exercise. Range of motion of the foot Range of motion is important for proper foot function, not only for flexing or pointing the feet, but also for side-to-side -side movements. This allows them to thoroughly explore the terrain and adapt to it during different types of motion. The aforementioned cushioning function is secured by the arches of the foot. In total, there are three of them two longitudinal arches and one anterior transverse arch. They consist of bones, ligaments and muscles. If the arch works properly, the weight of the body is evenly distributed over four points of the foot. These are located on the joint under the big and little toe and on the outside and inside of the heel. The moment we lose one of these points, the others become overloaded. People have different types of arches, which does not pose a problem per se, but they have different predispositions to potential problems. High arch feet tend to be stiffer, with less shock absorption abilities. This can lead to problems with the Achilles tendon and heel. A low arch foot is prone to becoming even flatter if it is not adequately strengthened. The arch of the foot is connected to walking. Correct gait begins with landing the heel first, continues with foot and toe placement followed by heel and midfoot lifting. The big toe lifts last. When walking, the toes should point straight ahead and the width of the footprint should align with the width of our pelvis. In-toeing and out-toeing is undesirable. Proper posture is a complex matter and in addition to ankles includes the knees and hips. Therefore, when we have problems, we also need to pay attention to these. Let's summarize what is needed for a proper function of our foot. Our joints must be sufficiently mobile. At the same time, stability is required and therefore we need to have strong ligaments, bones and joints. Our feet must also be perceptive enough to sense environmental stimuli and have to cooperate with the rest of our body. We can simply say that in order to function properly, our feet need enough space and stimuli. That's why our shoes should be wide and soft enough so that the foot has got room to move and consistently receive impulses from the environment to which it responds.